Hi, this is Shadi. Martial arts are not like tennis, golf, or basketball. There is always that element of reality that should be taken into consideration. We do enjoy competing with each other, having respect and courtesy for each other, but at the end of the day, I want you to always have a few elements in your game, whatever art you happen to practice, that can easily translate to reality. So, what we will do today is go through David Adams' video where he shows a fight. I'm not going to show all of it because it's incredibly graphic. I don't want it to be taken down or age-restricted. So what we will see is some Neiwaza elements, BJJ elements uh, of a triangle choke and discuss it afterwards. So this video, just like the soldier's video, is very revealing of how reality can be very different than, you know, the isolated environment of two athletes competing against each other so without further ado let's begin so here you have two kids fighting on grass um, they're swinging at each other you can see here and one of them falls down they try to catch up the bjj guy is in the red shorts so here you can see he tries to take his back the guy rolls and easily shrugs him off so he's trying to take the fight into the ground and then here he rolls shrugs it off easily and then here he takes him down the guy finds himself in the guard tries to go for a triangle choke the guy immediately acts out of instinct pulls him up and then performs a slam so and then after that he just hammers him down with punches you can see him here almost like unconscious trying to get things done so it looked absolutely horrifying if you want to quit the video you can do because there's no more things to show but i want to talk about a few things so um the way he was punching him after the slam it was like beating a dead horse but how they say it so it looked absolutely horrendous you can go to david adams channel and type triangle fail and you can watch the whole thing uncut but this is very revealing of reality versus competition and or you know sparring in class because this is what i always try to say is that self-defense should always be in the back of your head i know we develop a lot of habits uh, during training that does not truly translate but i want you to always have that one element or two that can easily be brought into self-defense because high lifts slams etc are always going to be there um, are you familiar with Daki Age or High Lift? Um, this in the past used to be Ippon. So the idea behind this is, for example, you find yourself against your opponent. They're in open guard after maybe a fail to Moinage or something. So you just gather them, pick them up like this. And the moment they are up high like this, it is considered Ippon. Because technically, if you can lift them like this, you can easily slam them and just finish them. Personally, I am very much uh, for bringing this back as an Ippon because it is very much reflective of reality because if I can pick you up like this, I can finish you. So these kids were actually very lucky. So if it wasn't grass, if it was something else like bricks or asphalt, that kid would be either dead or a paraplegic. So this is why I'm making this video. When it comes to guard and ground game, please do it if you happen to find yourself there. Don't have a strategy of going to the ground. I know this, it's built in your DNA as a BJJ guy. So I want you to have that one or two element that can be easily translated into reality. For example, here, this triangle choke, it's a much better pull than what happened from the open guard. Me, for example, against Rokas, even though he had better ground game than I did, when I pulled that Tomoinage, I found myself in an open guard and I was able to transition the way a judoka does into Neiwaza and getting the tap even though he has better ground game so it's that judo mentality again of doing things quickly and constantly changing and being as dynamic as possible so for the BJJ guys listening to this I have two things to ask from you one have one or good one or two good takedowns whether it's a simple body lock takedown that can get you into top position or like a single leg or a double leg I know the takedowns of BJJ can be effective they're not judo-esque like takedowns but still they can be very much effective so have that one or two takedowns you need to be confident on your two feet not just as a takedown artist like you can be a boxer that will make you confident on your own two feet you can be a karateka 
same thing. So you need to be confident on your two feet and have that one takedown, just or two. And also when it comes to the ground, work your top game constantly for self-defense, for controlling someone. Or also, if you are a great guard player, you just have a neck for it, you're a natural at playing guard, um, lapel, rubber guard, you know, knee shield, anything, make sure you have a good sweeping as well. Because if you do find yourself in a guard position in, in a real fight like this kid, you need to make sure to sweep them immediately and then go for the submission. Don't try to tap from the from like the bottom unless it's like it's already there and you have distance like for example that open guard uh, triangle or open guard arm bar so this is the thing with uh, i would say bjj arguments you see jocko willink you see uh, henry gracie talking about oh it's it is proved that it is the best system and it is the best martial art and you know the taekwondo guy went against the bjj guy took him down tapped him out because bjj is the best or uh, the gracie challenges but you are still in a context of an isolated uh, space, isolated two athletes against each other, where there is courtesy, where there is respect, and you would know that a lot of the stuff will not be done, like biting, uh, growing grabs like we saw in the soldiers video, uh, guard slamming. There's a reason why, even in UFC, guard sl I'm not sure about guard slamming, but groin striking eye gouging etc are illegal because not only they're unsportsmanlike but also they are incredibly effective so we need to keep in mind these particular elements so i find the bjj arguments a little bit confusing so in a very controlled environment yes it's the best and it's nothing new actually because back in the 1910s or that sunetane you see him here in front of you knew this and he trained his students into going more of a Neiwaza direction so he can pull guard and then isolate the guys so take the take away their takedown abilities and then win with superior Neiwaza. Pedro Valente when I had my talk with him he says it's the best strategy in a control environment where there is only two people take them to the ground eliminate a lot of their options and just proceed to win it's very easy but this particular idea arose towards I would say the end of the 1800s with all that with i'm sorry mataimon tanabe and uh, how he shocked everyone with his ashi garami and pulling and getting on top after his tomoinage and winning with superior neiwaza so after that you had hajime isogai and kaichiro samura developing it so they can actually get rid of him and then in the 1910s and 20s you had the rivalry of oda and all these other schools so it did this idea of I'm gonna take things to the ground and win and it's the best strategy ever and uh, you know BJJ is the best martial art it, it stems from this it's, it stems from a sporting contest not so much a reality uh, context and Kano knew this he wrote an article um, to respond to Tsunetane Oda and saying that in a real life situation this tactic is very dangerous for someone who is only depending on his Neiwaza and look look at these footage that I'm showing you in the past week or so. Um, the, Jigoro Kano is one of the very few people who are ahead of his time, but at the same time connected to his roots. Uh, judo, ancestrally speaking, is far more connected to its military side than BJJ, in my opinion, because BJJ, like you said, you take your time on the ground, you cook your opponent, you set up your submission, and then you finally go get the tap. While in judo, it's that quick mentality, do or die or you will be penalized type mentality that is still there within the rules because they want to keep it, quote, dynamic and spectator friendly. But it can translate very well self-defense wise. I don't agree with all the judo rules, of course. I you, you know my stance and also you know my stance on BJJ and their techniques. They're both um, two sides of the same coin. But... Always keep that real element inside your mind. Uh, I'm not saying don't stop training BJJ. Of course not. There's a lot of good things that can be translated into reality. But don't get too comfortable on your back. This is what I'm trying to say. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.